Have you ever been really, really in love with someone, where your every waking thought is concentrated solely on them, and the time when you're not with them feels like an eternity, counting down the minutes? Maybe you felt that way. Maybe you haven't. I've had my fair share of relationships, where I've had my head messed with over and over. Some of them liked playing mind games, others were abusive, some were hysterical, some were great, calm and kind people that I was too broken to love. Then there's Millicent or Millie. She was too good to be true. I've been part of the workforce for a few years now. I got my architecture degree at Cloud State, go Huskies, and moved out to Tomscog, Minnesota for an entry-level job. Small town, nice people, cheap apartments. When my little brother graduated from Minnesota State, they decided to have a party. He studied law, and he had a class full of future lawyers looking to get some stress out after taking the bar exam. Four open apartments on the same floor, everyone invited. It was the kind of frat fueled party frenzy you see in the movies. I can't believe some of the people I met there were aiming for positions of power. I met a guy there who swore he was going to be on the Supreme Court. He did a keg stand ten minutes later. Legend. That's where I first met Millie. If I'm a solid six, she would have been an eleven. It was hard not to gawk. She had short blonde hair, a cannibal corpse t-shirt, and the kind of jeans that you just throw on to get out of the house. She could have been wearing a plastic bag for all I cared. Her almond-shaped face was so unique. She was absolutely gorgeous, with a deceivingly large smile. No piercings, not even earrings, no makeup. She made her way through the room, seemingly knowing everyone. A beer just magically appeared in her hand, and before I knew it, an hour had passed. I found myself standing beside her in the hallway. Music was thumping all around us, but all I could hear was my own pulse. I've never experienced anything like it before, actual love at first sight. You don't look like a lawyer, she smiled. You are plus one? Here with my brother. Is he the one slamming fisherman shots, chatting up Kate in the kitchen? Allegedly. He absolutely was. He was on his seventh shot. Millie was delightful. Seeing that big smile up close was enough to break all the ice in the room. I felt like I could tell her everything. And we ended up talking for hours. I was completely sold. By the end of the night, we were making out in the back seat of my car, like teenagers. I'll be the first to admit that I got a bit obsessed with her. I texted her every day, but she always seemed so busy. She hadn't graduated yet. She was getting a master's degree in applied statistics. She didn't seem like the kind of person who would spend hours cooped up in a room with a bunch of numbers, but everything about Millie was a mystery to me. We started dating regularly. Most of the time we were just going out to eat and watch a movie. Nothing big. The night would always end the same, though, with a heavy make-out session. Sometimes more. She loved just hanging out at my place, even though she thought my scented candles was a bit much. I like sandalwood, sue me. But something was wrong. I've never been very sickly, but I started developing multiple ulcers, and I was losing a lot of weight. I've always had a bit of a frail physique, so losing more weight was dangerous. I could barely make it out of bed some days, and I remember once just sitting with a plate of spaghetti in front of me and trying to force myself to eat. It was too painful. I used to love pasta, but at that moment it looked like I'd opened a can of worms. Of course, when I told Millie about it, she would always come right over. She took care of me for days at a time. Helped me cook, clean, make the bed, pretty much everything. She used to bring over this delicious yogurt that made me feel like an actual human for a while. We'd cuddle up and watch friends for hours on end. And of course, plenty of making out. That goes without saying. But things just got worse. It got to the point where I had to be hospitalized and put on intravenous drip, as my body seemed unable to keep food down. My parents drove up to see me. All I could think about was Millie and how worried she'd be. Oddly enough, she didn't come see me, despite me texting her about it. The doctor talked about a serious vitamin B deficiency. I was given plenty of pills and a strict dietary regimen. I'd be back on my feet and ready to get back to work in a couple of days, he promised. He also told me I had to stop smoking or I'd develop a serious emphysema. When I told him I didn't smoke, he just shook his head in disbelief. I was given some prescription painkillers. The day I was let out of the hospital, I met Millie in the parking lot. She seemed surprised that my brother was there with me, and the two of them met for the first time. 
It was an awkward meeting on both sides, no more than a hey. That was it. Later that night I called him about it. Millie had gone home for the night, but she promised she'd be back after class the following day. My brother hadn't seen us together before, so I figured he was just surprised. I'm happy for you, he said, but she's bad news. You're just jealous, I laughed. No, I mean she has a reputation. Come on, come. I'm telling you, she's weird. She only dates sick guys. Apparently she had dated three guys who were all very sick. Two of them had to move out of state for special treatment. The third moved back in with his parents for long-term care. The next time Millie came back to my place, we ended up making out in the bedroom. I couldn't shake the idea that she was dating me for a reason. I noticed I was having a hard time opening my eyes or pushing her away. I was so occupied with those loving little kisses. Finally, I forced myself away to get a good look at her. I kind of wish I hadn't. We stopped kissing suddenly, and I opened my eyes. There was something wrong with her. Her eyes seemed larger, and her pupils were so dilated that her eyes looked black. There was an odd shape to them, similar to that of a frog. It was as if she was looking straight through me. Her mouth was round, leech-like, framed by her stretched pillowy lips. Her teeth were longer and serrated. Her neck seemed elongated to the length of my forearm. We weren't actually tenderly kissing. She was holding me down. She had wrapped her legs around me like a tick and dug her spiky fingers into my back. A thin stretch of black smoke rose from her nose. It dawned on me. We had never just kissed or made out. She'd done this to me a hundred times. She would lull me into this hypnotic state and then just suck the life out of me like a leech. She would blow white smoke into my lungs and then inhale black smoke back into herself. We would lie there, her breathing through my body for hours. I wouldn't remember anything but a pleasant night with a pretty girl, as my body was flooded with hormones and adrenaline, drained of whatever she needed from me. The painkillers must have made it easier for me to wake up. I had woken up like this before, briefly, and every time she would just clamp down and make me forget again. Millie was inches away from my face. She held me down, but I managed to free my arm. I pushed my hand against her face. She shrieked. Not a scream, but a weird shriek. She was inhaling air through what sounded like three different windpipes, making a flute-like reverse yell. I was coughing up black smoke, and she tried to suckle up every puff. I managed to roll over, but she clung to me like a backpack. I felt that round mouth trying to attach to me, but I was moving too much. She was surprisingly light, but far stronger than me. I could feel her arms and legs around me clinging. She had four other limbs, long bone-like appendages, shiny from some kind of grease. She lifted us off of the floor, her arms and legs holding me like a cocoon. The round mouth got a hold of my neck, and for a split second we were back on the bed making out. Tender kisses and sweet whispers, and... but we weren't. I was being flooded with hormones, my head dipping in and out of consciousness. As I coughed up the final puff of black smoke I felt my mind clearing. With my free arm I grabbed the candle lighter on my nightstand. Maybe she didn't actually care about the scented candles so much as the lighter. I twisted my arm in a weird angle and turned on the lighter. I set her signature Cannibal Corpse t-shirt on fire. She let go and fumbled away. She tore off her shirt and I could finally see her for what she really looked like. This wasn't the girl I'd seen at the party. Her face was longer and smoother. Her midriff was thin, stretchy and ribbed like an earthworm. Her entire body vibrated with every shallow breath. Six eyes in the middle of her torso, two columns of three. They all blinked and moved independently. There were veins where they shouldn't be. Oddly shaped appendages, translucent skin. She was spasming, scrambling to look human. I had a few seconds before she regained her composure. I just kept lighting things on fire. The bed, the drapes, the carpet. With every lick of flame, she'd just shriek more. I want you back, her head cried. Three windpipes, no longer trying to emulate the sound of a unified voice. I'll be careful. You won't... you won't remember. My heart was pounding so hard I could barely hear her. The smoke alarm went off. Millie didn't even stand on her legs anymore. She folded her arms and legs into herself. Her head leaned back into her neck, fitting perfectly into an unnatural angle. A ball of Millie, held up by sticky bones coming out of her sides. The sounds were coming from her hollow neck. I want to watch friends, she cried, every vowel vibrating. 
I want a snack, I want to cuddle. In a last-ditch effort to get to me, she forced herself through the fire. I locked myself in the bathroom. I'd rather die from smoke inhalation than from whatever she turned out to be. She kept pounding the door, a smatter of splats and thuds, but the door didn't budge. The fire alarm was going crazy and soon the pounding stopped. She was gone. This was a few years ago, but I still can't kiss anyone with my eyes closed. I have nightmares about that black smoke filling up my body, then getting sucked out. It was like someone giving me mouth to mouth, their air blowing out of my nose, that face breathing through me like an extension of their lungs, her flirty eyes nothing more than a trick to get close to me. Pretty little lips wrapped around a monster's mouth, too large for a human cranium. I don't think I'll ever get over it. I can still feel my body aching to get back to her. My body loved Millie. Knowing what really happened, and what she is, is the only defense I have from trying to find her again. It would be so easy to just let go, to let her have me, but I would be dead. But of course I have doubts. Maybe she really cared. Maybe she would be more careful if we tried again. See how easy it is, never again. I'm telling you this as a warning. If someone seems too good to be true, and makes you feel better than you've ever felt, maybe there's a reason. Just open your eyes every now and then. Take a good look. Is this really happening?